Are you tired of all those hair loss treatments and products that claim to work but don't? My name's William Gonitz and I am your no frills, no BS certified trichologist that is going to help you understand how to tackle your hair loss and actually regrow hair. Hello everyone and welcome to the Trichologist Podcast. My name is William Gonitz. I am your no frills, no BS hair loss treatment provider. And today we are going to talk about inflammation. And this topic is, is a pain. And for some people, it actually causes pain. It is one of those things that it's a little bit of a moving target. It's one of those things that out of the three reasons for hair loss, so you've got DHT, you've got nutrition, and the third is inflammation. It is the hardest to deal with. With that in mind, this podcast is brought to you by Advanced Trichology. If you haven't heard of Advanced Trichology, you really need to because Advanced Trichology is the cutting edge of what is coming out of hair loss treatment today. If you go to advancedtrichology.com, go up in the top right-hand corner and actually click the take the quiz button. If you do that, it is going to allow you to input your little bit of a patient history and it will produce an output that is your personalized recommendations for your hair loss treatment. And that is really important because you are an individual and you have to treat your situation like an individual because there is no one size fits all treatment. There just isn't because everybody's different. So go ahead and do that. Now let's talk about inflammation. So long story, of course, because I'm a little long-winded on occasion, I originally started losing my hair because of inflammation. I didn't realize that at the time. I thought it was male pattern loss, thought it was you know a million different quasi things that realistically didn't really matter. But at the end of the day, inflammation is one of those things that if your blood work is perfect, from a nutritional standpoint, if you are not losing hair exclusively on the top of the head uh, because, or you have more loss on the top of the head because uh, of genetics, so DHT, then you're probably dealing with an inflammatory component. If there's any itching or burning, if there's gut issues, uh, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux, if you're on a lot of medications, if there's flaking, if there's uh, sort of this tight, uncomfortable scalp, all of these are indications that inflammation is at play. And inflammation can be a little tiny detail, which could be resolved with other portions of the treatment, or it could be the primary reason for your loss. So you must, again, assess your entire situation. So the number one thing that you need to do to understand if you are losing hair from inflammation is the patient history. So do you have constipation, diarrhea, or acid reflux? Are you on a plethora of different medications? Are you having itching or burning on your scalp? If you have answered yes to two of those, then you are dealing with inflammation. You just are. Now, another way to do some sort of assessment to rule out DHT or to rule out sort of general nutrition is to do a hair pull test. Now I went off the hair pull test for a really long time and I've circled back to it because the hair pull test, because of the way that you lose hair from different reasons for loss becomes a very powerful component when you're trying to understand what's happening. So a hair pull test is basically where you take your fingers and you run your fingers through your hair and you pull just, just enough to get what would normally be a little bit of hair. So you're not tugging in the sense that you're uh, ripping hair out. You certainly don't want to do that. You are simply running your fingers through your hair in a particular spot and you just kind of grab and pull. So if you're watching this on YouTube, that's all you're doing now. So I've just pulled a bunch of times from the back of my scalp. So if you're doing a normal hair pull test, which is going to be in our app when it comes out here in the next couple months, then you realistically want to pull from the top middle, you want to pull from sort of the back right side, back left side, and then kind of down towards the nape of the neck, back, and then on the right and the left. Now, if you're losing hair down here, so, and I keep doing this because honestly, I do this frequently where I'm pulling from the back of my neck, because if I'm actively losing hair from 
inflammation, you were typically going to be losing it around under the occipital ridge, which is this little pointy thing in the back of your skull. Underneath that, you will be losing hair from that area, which is a, it's a bizarre area to lose hair from because nutritional is mainly along the sides. If you have really ag aggressive nutritional loss, DHT is on the top and inflammation affects the entire scalp. But if you're losing it from the bottom, then it's pretty much guaranteed that you're dealing with inflammation. So run your hands through the back of your scalp. Oh, I got one finally. And see what you have. Now, if you do that twice in a row and you have more than essentially zero to one hairs, then you are losing hair excessively towards the nape of the neck, which means you certainly could be dealing with inflammation. So when you're looking at the entire component, then you know you've ticked the box for this area. Now, again, you need to go ahead and get your blood work, rule out anything nutritionally. You need to be treating the top of your scalp with DHT blockers or internally with DHT blockers if you have a genetic history and if you have more loss on the top of your head. So if you've ruled all that out, and again, most likely you've got a flaky, itchy scalp or just an itchy scalp, or you have digestive problems, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux, then you're dealing with inflammation. So the Ghana trichology method states that you must treat each reason for a loss completely for you to be able to regrow hair. Inflammation is the hardest one because there are a variety of different reasons for inflammatory loss because they could be, again, from medications. You can truly be losing hair from stress in the inflammatory compartment. You can have a medical condition that may be complicated uh, by inflammation, which could be, say, psoriatic arthritis, which would then trigger other things like alopecia areata, which are the, the circle uh, hair loss. You could be dealing with dietary components like leaky gut syndrome, or essentially you are passing your nutrients so quickly through your digestive tract because you have chronic diarrhea that you're not absorbing certain things, which are creating inflammation. And inflammatory loss is this very large bucket. And it encompasses so many different details that all really need to be treated the same. But again, stress, you're going to be looking at medications. You're going to be looking at uh, environmental factors. So allergies are a big deal. It creates systemic inflammation. So it could be a nutritional allergy, so a dietary one, or it could be an environmental allergy. And this also falls into the medical category with chemotherapy. So chemotherapy is an inflammatory response because you're creating all this inflammation from the toxic load of the uh, chemotherapy, and it's attacking and disrupting the cells that are growing your hair because they're rapidly dividing cells. So that also plays into this. So because of this large bucket, you have a lot of different names for hair loss that fall into this. So alopecia areata, which you, I'm sure you've heard of, it's been a big discussion for a lot of people for um, what happened with that big slap, you know, with Will Smith recently. So the, the alopecia that is a alopecia areata, a totalis, a universalis, these are alopecias that are directly caused by inflammation. So what's actually happening is the inflammation is targeting the hair follicle and disrupting the way that the epithelial cells are actually growing the hair, which is essentially the little construction workers that are manufacturing the hair. And it creates a disruption just enough to where it actually will either stop the growth or it will disrupt the hair cycle so that it breaks off just above the scalp, which gives these exclamation point hairs, which is a uh, alopecia areata microscopic sort of quintessential look. And you have things like telogen effluvium, which was COVID related hair loss. So you end up having uh, COVID stress. So your body's going through this massive stressor of all of this inflammation from COVID. And you end up 90 days later going through a huge shed and this shed continues. And COVID loss unfortunately, because it creates sort of this long-term systemic inflammation in some uh, types of, of individuals, that it creates a disruption beyond COVID itself and beyond the initial shed and actually has to be sort of subdued with 
lifestyle changes and with nutritional supplement changes. And then you have other things that aren't infections. So infections like folliculitis. Folliculitis is a bacterial infection of the scalp. It can create scarring. In some cases, it might not create scarring, but either way, you're gonna get these very large pustules like acne on the surface of the scalp. And when they erupt, you're oozing more bacteria onto the surface of the scalp, which then you know creates a larger problem. But beyond that, you end up possibly, if it's a scarring folliculitis, when that, that overall pustule pops, then you end up getting a scarring scenario and the scar actually envelops the hair follicle and kills the hair follicle. So you cannot grow hair on a scar. That scar will completely eliminate the hair follicle when it's created if it's a large enough scar. That leads me to talk about other scarring alopecias. Like in plantar planaris, you have CCCA, or basically there is a whole group of alopecias called cicatricial alopecias, and all of them are scarring. So what's come out recently is the African-American community in the United States uses a lot of chemicals, and so they're using a lot of relaxers on the scalp to then relax the hair so that it begin, becomes more manageable and becomes straight. And when you do that, you end up putting all of these chemicals into the scalp. And when that happens, you really are creating a scenario for immune malfunction. And your body will become almost this um, allergy to what's being put on the surface of your scalp. It will almost attack and disrupt the overall uh, surface of the scalp then creating scarring, which then kills the hair follicle. And so that has become a very, very large discussion in hair loss because how do you deal with this? And for a lot of African-American females, it is literally a cultural phenomenon where weekly or sometimes more often than that, you're going into your, your stylist or your, your family is actually all together and you're performing these uh, hair treatments together and it's a communal activity. And so all of a sudden these communal activities are creating enough trauma on the scalp where it's creating permanent hair loss. So you're having to change an entire lifestyle or an entire culture to prevent this hair loss from reoccurring. So so many pieces to this. And when you're looking at this, you go, okay, well, what are, what do all of these components have in common with one another? And the, all of these individual reasons for hair loss, the thing that they have in common is inflammation because your body is either attacking itself or is attacking a foreign body on the surface of the scalp. So another one of these things that can actually invade the top of the scalp is a fungus or a, the Demodex parasite. Fungus becomes a very large problem when you're dealing with dandruff or you're dealing with something called seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis is an immune malfunction that actually causes hair loss. It also causes this massive scale on the scalp that is accompanied by fungus. And when this occurs, your body is basically accelerating the amount of individual skin cells that you have building up on the surface of the scalp much faster than you normally make them. And then there's these little gaps between these skin cells, which then you have sebum, which is the oil produced on the surface of the scalp, being overproduced. And that gets between the layers of the skin cells and then fungus, which is always present on our scalp, but it's normally maintained by our immune system, will then take over and proliferate in these little spaces where there's a lot of sebum and dead skin cells. So when that happens, you get this massive amount of inflammation, this massive amount of yellow scale. I mean, I've seen people peeling potato chip like yellow flakes off the surface of their scalp. I have seen the worst seborrheic dermatitis ever. I mean, it's not even in textbooks. People were coming in and this one particular case in Arizona, this poor kid, he was 17 years old. He had seborrheic dermatitis and he used to put oil on his scalp, which is the worst thing that you can do with seborrheic dermatitis because if you're using something that's not antifungal, you're simply adding to the oil and you're making the hair loss worse and the inflammation worse. So that's a problem. Demodex. So Demodex is a little tiny parasite that lives all over our body. There are 
think 62 different types of Demodex, only two of which live on the human body. It's also the same type of creature that creates mange in a dog. But Demodex, when you become immunocompromised, will actually crawl normally on the surface of the scalp, get inside your hair follicle, and when it gets inside your hair follicle normally, your immune system will attack it. But if you're nutritionally deficient, if you're on medications, you know, a whole bunch of different reasons why your body doesn't fight it off. But once it's in there, it will lay eggs inside your hair follicle, inside the sebaceous gland, and then you go from one Demodex parasite to like 10. And then it will keep actually getting worse and it will spread from one hair follicle to another because if it, you're not washing your hair often, if you don't know it's there, if you sleep with a dog in your bed, which I find that there's a connection, there really shouldn't be because canine Demodex don't actually cross over to humans. But I found that when someone has a dog in their bed, they have a higher probability of this uh, overwhelming Demodex infection. And essentially you can't ever get rid of it if it's really bad. You can only mitigate it to a point where it's manageable. Now, obviously if you catch it early enough, you can get rid of it completely, but it's a bear. So you've got infection, you've got immune malfunction, you've got stress, you've got environmental factors, all of these different things that are causing inflammatory loss. So what do you do? Because I just named all of these horrifying things. And you're like, well, thank you so much for letting me know these exist. How do I fix it? And that's a great question because whenever I tell people that they need to change something drastic in their lifestyle, sometimes I get pushback. Case in point, back in the day, we're going circa 2005. There was a young man, he was, I think in his late twenties at the time, full universal total, or excuse me, full alopecia totalis. So meaning he has no hair at all from the neck up. That is a definition of alopecia totalis. So it's basically no hair from the neck up. Alopecia universalis is the entire body, no hair. And then areata is the most least form of that, which is just little circles on the scalp. But in his case, he had no hair from the neck up. He came into my office and he's like, hey, what do I do? And I said, all right, this is an inflammatory problem. We need to go through and figure out where this is coming from because only a situation like this that's this dramatic has to have a very powerful source. So and when you're dealing with this type of inflammation, it's either environmental or it's emotional. So it's one or the other. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. You either getting sort of this toxic shock from something anywhere in the environment, could be allergies, could be chemicals, could be medications, et cetera or you could be dealing with emotional trauma. So in his case, he worked for a company, sorry, he owned a company that put lacquer on wood products like cabinets. And that was his entire job. So he would inhale all of these chemicals on a daily basis. And that essentially directly caused this hair loss because he didn't have any hair loss before he started working basically in this environment. And after about a year of him working in this environment, that's when the totalis cre was created. So in that scenario, we know there's a direct cause and effect. So what did I tell him to do? S quit doing what you do and go through a detoxification program. Well, that's his job. It's his lifestyle. He made good money. He said, no. And he's like, I can't do that. This is how I make my money. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. So that was a problem. Uh, one of the reasons why I lost my hair, I worked for a chemical company. I was at the time I was 21 and, uh, while I was going to school, I was in the chemicals. I was, it was an automotive chemical company. And for some people, it made no difference whatsoever if they were working with dirty transmission fluid or working with dirty coolant or inhaling these chemicals, because for them, it wasn't a problem for me. Apparently I have a sensitive system. It took about a year for me working in this environment before I just started dumping hair. And when I mean dumping hair, I was the picture of health. And then my hair started going gray at 21, like this washed out weird brown color and just started dumping off my head. And I couldn't control it. Nothing would control it. Propecia, minoxidil, that's my story that nothing would work. And everybody was like, you know what? I don't know what to do. This is, this is a bizarre situation. Come back when you lose more hair, we'll do a transplant. None of these were good answers. That's what happened to me. It turns out I had diffuse alopecia areata, which is a very bizarre inflammatory 
uh, type of hair loss. My mom, though, also has alopecia areata. So that is, there are some genetic components to this inflammation. And I had a terrible gut. My gut has been, uh, back then, was just a mess. And if you add up all of the pieces of what make inflammatory hair loss, it made perfect sense. When I deal with these things today, actually, I met a gentleman that I have to do a consult for, and he was in the military. And while he was in the military, he was exposed to burn pits, all these crazy vaccines, all these, you know, crazy concoctions that they had them consume while they were in Afghanistan. Well, his poor gut, and he was on 18 months, I think, of antibiotics. His poor gut was annihilated. And I'm looking at him and I'm talking to him at a conference and he's going, I have hair loss, but nothing works for me. And I, I started asking him questions and I'm like, well, of course it, nothing's working for you. If you look at his head, he has diffuse thinning throughout his entire scalp, which can be an inflammatory response. It was directly related to when he came off of the antibiotics and he was exposed to all the stuff in the military. So you go, of course, your gut is a mess and you have all this inflammation. That's what it is. And when you key in on that, you have to use a certain set of criteria to control it. So when you've identified that inflammation is your cause. How do you treat it? And it is, it is, again, it's a moving target because some people you can fix one aspect of their hair and then something else pops up. For example, you may correct a nutritional component. Let's just say their ferritin and their D are off. You fix that. Now, all of a sudden, their hormones become a little bit more normal and their immune system is actually becoming a little bit more stable and a little bit more aggressive because now all of a sudden they have the nutrients for their immune system to function normally. This may trigger a little bit more DHT related loss that they would have had anyway if their immune system was solid and some inflammatory loss because maybe there's something in their environment that's causing a problem. So the best thing to do is to try to identify the source. So it, it could be stress. So if you've gone, oh, another case in point. So I had a, a woman who she lived, she was 65 years old. She was seeing me at the office in Tempe. She didn't have any hair loss, beautiful gray, like flowing long hair. And she had this spot, an alopecia areata spot right in the back of the head. And it was growing, it was getting bigger. And I said, okay, when did this start? She's like six months ago. I go, okay, what happened? approximately 90 to 120 days before that spot appeared. Because normally 90 to 120 days before something major happens, it's kind of a trigger. And she goes, well, my husband died and then I moved. And I'm like, when did you move? And it was lined up perfectly with the same amount of time that was 90 days prior to the onset of her loss. So I said, do you think that this move was a big enough move where it could have created emotional trauma that created this shed? She's like, well, I lived in the same house with my husband for 30 years. I'd never moved until then. And it very well could have. It turns out that that move was the direct cause. She ended up coming back a year later and we treated her with a topical steroid and it all grew back. So she basically got over the emotional trauma. It settled down and then her inflammatory loss went away. And many people are not that lucky. You, again, if you have allergies, Arizona is another perfect example. The seasonal allergies in Arizona are gnarly. They are just aggressive. It, the high micron materials that are floating around in the, the air in Arizona are, it's more polluted with high micron materials than any other place in the United States. So people think of LA as a place that has the worst smog and the worst air pollution. And maybe for small micron, small micron materials, it does. But Phoenix, Arizona, because it's a valley, it's dry, it kicks up with all this dust, you end up getting these really big particles that are being absorbed into your body. So people get these very aggressive allergies. I had people lose hair every spring and every fall because of their allergies in Arizona. And it happens in other places. The treatment, because you're trying to treat the cause, was Zyrtec. You're giving them an anti-allergy to calm down the inflammation and their hair loss would stop. And 
you did other things. I mean, you want to make sure again that their nutrition is good. So you make sure their D is good. Ferritin is good. They're on the follow growth vitamin, all that good stuff. And that there's no DHT at play, but that was the trigger for the inflammatory loss. If you can identify it. Now, if the trigger is emotional, then you have to try to deal with it emotionally. I've seen people go to therapy. I've seen people do other things like the emotional freedom technique, which is actually this tapping technique where you sort of tap and diffuse emotional trauma. For me, I had a tremendous amount of emotional trauma from stuff from my past. We all do. And EFTs, emotional freedom technique, is something that worked really well for me. And some people get hypnotized, whatever it takes, whatever it takes for you to get the emotional aspect under wraps. So you've got, let's remove the trigger. If you can, another case in point, food allergies. So for myself, so I had a chemical exposure, which led to a, a ton of shedding, but over time I had to battle my own loss. I still battle my own loss. And it turns out that I, by process of elimination, that I have a sunflower oil allergy. If, if any, if there was a test for it that was actually accurate, I would suggest it, but it was by pure process of elimination that I was able to pinpoint sunflower oil as the number one reason for the inflammation that I was experiencing. All seed oils are bad, come to find out for the most part, and except for olive oil, which is actually from the fruit, I believe, and avocado oil, I believe you must really try to eat in accordance to your blood type to avoid allergens. So I talk about eating in accordance to your blood type all the time because that decreases your inflammation pretty dramatically. If you want to eat to avoid allergens, eat correctly for your blood type because I've never seen a time that there is a inflammatory food mistakenly on the highly beneficial list. So when you look at eating correctly for your blood type, there's three subcategories for every category. So when you look at this overall rule, it'll give you for each blood type, a breakdown for each individual category of food. So it could be uh, proteins, could be fruits, vegetables, it could be nuts, whatever. When you look at these categories of foods, there are three subcategories, highly beneficial, neutral, and avoid. Avoid, obviously, don't eat it. It creates inflammation. Think of it like it creates hair loss in your body. So that's eating correctly for your blood type for diminishing inflammation. Stay off the avoid list as much as humanly possible. Everything that's in the avoid list can create inflammation for your scenario, depending upon your blood type. Neutral, is it's not going to create inflammation. It's not going to uh, also decrease inflammation. And then highly beneficial is it is going to decrease inflammation and be the best for your body. So if you're dealing with inflammatory hair loss, you want to make sure that you're eating correctly for your blood type and eating as much as possible off of the highly beneficial list and removing as much as possible from your diet from the avoid list. I kid you not, I can't even count the amount of times that we did everything right. We treated all their blood work. We did obviously everything we needed to do for DHT. They were on you know, all the right products and something was holding them back. And one of the key factors too for inflammatory hair loss is that when you're trying to recover, you'll actually get well for a minute and then you'll shed, and then you'll get well for a minute, and then you'll shed. So you sort of have this ebb and flow when you're dealing with inflammation. And in that scenario, I've had countless people that all we had to do is look at their diet and go, you know what? Eat correctly for your blood type strictly. And it changed the dynamic of their entire hair loss condition. I said it on uh, basically other venues where I say, you can control all hair loss with the exception of DHT related hair loss through diet and lifestyle. That's it. You absolutely can. The problem is, is that most people just have a really wonky lifestyle and diet for their body. I, for me, I run into this problem. I have two kids, a wife, a business, 
I have my own, you know, stuff that I want to do. There's not enough time in the day. I don't get enough sleep most of the time. And I oftentimes, you know, I have two glasses of wine at night. Well, that's probably not that great for my liver. <laughs> and, and realistically over time may create inflammation. So I offset that by eating as clean as possible. And that's the way that I handle it because I know I have inflammatory hair loss. And I know that when I eat a bunch of stuff that may have sunflower oil in it, I'm going to shed. When I had COVID multiple times, every single time I shed, regardless of how much I was doing because the inflammation was causing the shed. So you have to deal with the inflammation and then bring it down and balance everything out. So I, there's a lot of pieces to this and we're not going to get through all of it today. The treatments for this, no matter what, is try your best to eliminate the source. That is a tall task. I can't really ask too many people to do that, but try. And again, if it's emotional, you have to remove the emotional trigger. If it's environmental, whether it be a toxin in your environment like allergies, or it may be something you're consuming that's an allergy, try to locate what that is and mitigate it. If you, in that dietary zone, eat correctly for your blood type strictly, and that should help remarkably for most scenarios. And if you need to take that to the next level, then there is a product by Advanced Trichology called the uh, EFA Complete. There's a handful of things that actually decrease inflammation or clinically proven to do so, some of which are, are omega-3 essential fatty acids. Now, omega-3s aren't good for every blood type. So I created a product called the EFA Complete, which is a universal essential fatty acid for every blood type. And you take three a day. So you're taking two and a half grams of essential fatty acids per day. It is an omega-3, 6, and 9, and that is going to help bring down inflammation. Additionally, and you do this long-term, or you can obviously eat a lot of fatty fishes. You can get a lot of oils from different sources. You can use a lot of raw coconut oil in your diet, and you can use a lot of uh, raw olive oil in your diet, and that will help bring in some of these uh, essential fats as well. Obviously, you know, fish as well. Then there is a detox component. So if your liver and your kidneys are toxic, then you are going to throw more inflammation. And there is a old Ayurvedic treatment that was specifically for growing hair. And it was a liver and kidney cleanse. And it had the components of dandelion root, burdock root, licorice root, orange peel, and cinnamon. I took that formula and I introduced it into the clinic back in 2006, 2007, and created a tea. And we started using that tea in the clinic because we needed to help detoxify people. And if you take pills, pills just aren't as efficient as releasing all these medicinals into fluid like tea does. So there is a product that we call Detoxify Tea, and you can use this Typically, when you're dealing with an inflammatory treatment protocol, you'll use the tea for the first month. And depending on how aggressive your inflammatory symptoms are, you might take one cup a day, you might take two cups, cups a day. There may be three cups a day max that you can consume for a month. It is going to help detoxify the liver and the kidneys. Then you obviously transition over to the EFA and you can maintain that long term. If you've done that with a balanced diet, if you've done that with eliminating the stressor, of whatever it is that's causing the loss. If you're shampooing daily, because if you're dealing with inflammatory loss and there's any flaking, excessive oil, uh, itching on the scalp, you should be shampooing on a daily basis. And when you shampoo, you need to use a product like the Advanced Trichology Hair Stem Shampoo and Conditioner, whereas it's designed to clean the scalp. A lot of shampoo is designed to make your hair look nice. So it's a chemical that is going to volumize the hair or in a conditioner, it may essentially just create a more shine to the scalp or to the hair. And what you 
really should be caring about is your scalp when you're managing inflammation. So you want to use something, I'll use the hair stem shampoo as an example, get about a quarter size of hair stem shampoo on your hand, get it on your scalp and physically uh, massage the surface of the scalp all the way down to the nape of the neck, back to the front and let that sit for 30 seconds, lean back and rinse and then repeat. So you're shampooing twice. And when you do that, you end up removing all the buildup on the surface of the scalp. You remove any demodex parasites that are hanging out there. You remove any fungus or, again, debris that may be causing inflammation. And when you do that, you leave yourself with a nice, clean, healthy scalp. And then you use the conditioner and you actually, ironically, massage the conditioner into the scalp. So you get about a quarter size of conditioner, hair and scalp, massage that in, and then you let it sit for about three minutes with the conditioner. So it moisturizes the scalp. It moisturizes the hair. It doesn't leave a chemical residue. It doesn't leave an oily residue for Demodex or fungus to consume. And now you've got a nice clean scalp and you've got a healthy scalp that is re basically removed of anything that could be causing a amount of inflammation on the surface of the scalp that was uh, basically fixable by you shampooing. So you want to shampoo daily. A lot of times people will say that there are scalp itches if they don't shampoo on a daily basis. That is a clear sign of inflammation. <clears throat> there is never a good time for itching on the scalp. Back in the day in the clinic, people used to go, oh, my scalp was really itchy. I thought that was good. I must be growing hair. And I mean, I feel for them that they were thinking very positive and that's great. I can appreciate it. However, that itching was a sign that there was something bad going on. So in that scenario, they should have been like, hey, Will, my scalp itches. And I'd be like, all right, we need to take a look at your scalp under the microscope and figure out what's going on. With all that in mind, those are the natural treatments. There's a next level to this thing. And if you're going down the medical route, you are attempting to suppress the immune system. And the medical route for dealing with inflammation is essentially steroids. So you can, I mean, I've seen people get a, an oral systemic steroid for their hair, such as prednisone, which created so many side effects that their hair was the least of their concern at that point. It may have stabilized things a little bit, but <laughs> the side effects were so bad that they couldn't stay on it. What I would recommend if you had to go into this path, obviously you have to find a dermatologist that is willing to prescribe these particular steroids for you. And the number one thing that I would recommend if you're dealing with seborrheic dermatitis, alopecia areata, folliculitis, maybe CCCA, frontal fibrosing alopecia, which is another scarring alopecia that affects women typically right around the temporal points, then clobetazole, the scalp serum, 0.05% can be applied to the area on a daily basis. Now, most dermatologists will tell you that you can't use it ongoing because that product thins the skin and can actually change the complexion of the scalp. I spoke with a gentleman that this is, he's a very, very well-known dermatologist. He does an extraordinary amount of research. And he said to me, in my practice, I have had some people on clobetazole once daily for 30 years. So it's not a problem long-term. Again, go speak to your prescribing physician if this is something you're going to do and you need to be monitored by a physician. But in that scenario, clobetazole is a topical steroid that can help with those mild inflammatory cases that are being presented on the surface of the scalp very aggressively. The next level to this, I've seen some people use biologics like Humira, and I've seen my mom actually, I think, had some success with this because she has psoriatic arthritis, but she ended up uh, having to change her medications. But there I've seen outside of Humira, the other biologic that is very helpful, um, which is eluding me at the moment. But those have a tremendous amount of side effects. So you have to be very, very careful. I would never directly recommend them just for hair, but if you have psoriatic arthritis 
and alopecia areata, or you have rheumatoid arthritis and something else, then it may be a good fit. There is a new medication that came out. It was originally for rheumatoid arthritis. It was the first medication for alopecia areata, totalis and universalis, which is a JAK inhibitor just came out. You can look it up. That comes along with side effects as well, but it is FDA approved specifically for alopecia areata and totalis, and which is the first drug ever for inflammatory hair loss. It's an option, but it comes along with side effects. It's essentially debilitating your immune response. Thus, you are getting a, a reduction in hair loss because your immune system is what's attacking your, your scalp. And at the end of the day, you have medical options that are very aggressive and you have what I would recommend are the lifestyle changes, the detoxification regimen, the supplements to maintain normal, really average inflammatory loss. That is what I do and that is what I recommend. If you get to that place where things are bad, sometimes you know, you're going to go to a dermatologist and they're going to recommend a biopsy. Most of the time, biopsies don't show you anything. I have diffuse areata and I had multiple biopsies when I first started losing my hair. It didn't show anything. It said I had androgenetic alopecia. It's really kind of up to the pathologist if it's going to be read properly. But when you're dealing with inflammatory hair loss, go through the checklist. Are you dealing with gut issues, itching on the scalp? Are you on medications? Are you, you know, stressed? Are you getting a proper amount of sleep? Because low sleep is also an issue. So from a lifestyle perspective, you should be getting at least six hours of sleep. If you're not, that's going to create inflammation. Anything that creates inflammation, you want to reduce. So you must be conscious of that. But deal first with the lifestyle factors, nutritional factors, the dietary factors. Give it 90 days. If things are not working and you're still having the inflammatory problems, then go get the biopsy. Then go see the dermatologist for clobetazole or um, obviously taking it to the next level with additional pharmaceuticals. So I want you to consider these things. And I know this one was a little bit all over the place. There's a lot that goes into the inflammation, but if you go back to the core and the core is if you picture your body's inflammation a little bit like a pond and the way that I look at it is when you have a pond in the morning and you wake up and it's perfectly flat, there's, it's, you know, there's dew and there's, you know, steam rising off the pond and it's just like glass. That's how you want your immune system. Every bit of trauma that you experience on a daily basis, every inflammatory food, every medication, every allergen is like throwing a little pebble into that pond and it creates ripples. And if you have enough ripples, it's going to start splashing up onto the sides of the pond. And if that happens over and over and over again, even when the ripples or even when the little rocks are stopped being thrown into the pond, it will take a while for everything to balance out. So give it 90 days and bring that, that whole calm back to the system. And I bet 80% of the time for normal inflammatory loss, it will be resolved and you will feel better and your hair will look better and everything's going to grow better. So with that being said, that's today's episode. <laughs> and I really hope you take value from this. If you do, please go ahead, you know, leave a rating on any of the podcast platforms. If you're watching it on YouTube, go ahead, subscribe to this channel. If I can be of assistance to you, please obviously reach out to us. You can leave it in the comments. I'm happy to help there. I am William Gonitz, the host of The Trichologist Podcast, your no frills, no BS hair loss treatment provider. I hope that helps. I'll see you next episode.